Hoş geldiniz sevgili seyirciler. Bugün sizlere beraber Andam'da baştan sona ben efsane bir hikayesine karşınızda. Bakalım sizin sen sevmen aşağıdan abone olmayı unutmayın. Videoyu beğenip ayırsa da bize destek olabilirsiniz. Video boyunca sesimi duymayacaksınız. Bir kısmı yayından olduğu için facecam'i göreceksiniz. Ama kalan kısımlarda facecam olmayacaktır. Sadece oyunun sesini de göreceksiniz. Yorumsuz bir şekilde. Umarım beğenirsiniz. İyi seyirler. Efsanenin yolculuğu. Şurada efsanenin yolculuğu var. Hiç girmedim buraya. Bir girmek istiyorum. Maceraya başla diyelim. Bakalım nasıl bir şey olacak. So sorry. We weren't able to save her. My condolences. May he rest in peace. This wasn't your fault, Doctor. Near the end, she kept mumbling two names. John and Tina, saying, I'm sorry for lying to you. I believe John and Tina are her children. You need to find them. Every child grows up believing their parents' white lies. The Tooth Fairy, Little Elves, Santa Claus. There's Pinocchio as well, whose nose grows longer when he lies. Maybe this mother just made up some bizarre stories. The secret might be in her diary.
Why are they so interested in that piece of paper? Idiots. How old are you again? Do you think I'm a three-year-old kid? Even Tina's not gonna be taken in by that. You may be smooth, but you'll have no luck! Listen up, big guy. The monsters around these parts give no quarter. If you don't want to be caught, you better make good and get out! Don't follow me! Did... did we just get told off by a kid? Copycats, you're starting to get annoying. I'm faster than a race car. You'll never catch me. Just give up and go away. Wait, really? N no way. You got liar written all over your big dumb face. I won't fall for that. Mm -hmm. Catch me if you can, slow pokes. away again. Looks like a little camp up ahead. Looks like some survivors stopped here. Mom, you said if we win the hide and seek contest, you'll bring us to an amusement park. Look, I drew the whole thing. Let's go there and play after the game is over. I got the best mom in the whole world. <laughs> some oil drums I could use to start a fire. That's right, big guy. Over here. All right, cleaned up this mess. Time to find that kid. I bet he's in trouble. I bet this barrier was made by the mother and her kids. They've had their share of tough times. Okay. A big... push. Their little hideout must be behind here. I'll just give this a little push and... It's Mr. Jones. Your sister doesn't look so good, John. You 
can help her, right? Mom told me to look after her. Why hasn't Mom come back yet? Is she okay? That's right, mister. Mom said everyone in the world is playing hide-and-seek. If we hide from the monsters and baddies, we get points. Of course. Mom said when the game's over, we get to go to an amusement park. Did you know that? With a Ferris wheel and everything! Yeah, okay. I don't want to let Mom down. The children were sent to the Raven camp, and the girls soon recovered thanks to the care she received there. John, the boy, wanted to keep playing so he could win the playground, and so we decided to give him a surprise. This is what their mother was hoping for, I guess. She gave her life for this. For her kids to have something to look forward to. The kids are going to find out the truth one day. What then? Looks like the old man's in trouble. Beat it, damn ya! Get away from my car! Sir, let me help. Can't you see, kid? I can handle things by myself. Thanks. Sir, I'm worried that the sound of those gunshots just now might draw even more zombies here. I'll feel a lot better having an extra person around. Okay. Looks like my ride's busted. I better fix it ASAP or I'll be walking to the seaside. <laughs> uh, come on, youngin. Give me a hand here. Hold him off, kid. Relax, sir. I'll handle it. Almost there, just a little more to go. <laughs> ah, then let's get going. Oh, yeah. You're with the Ravens, aren't you? Hmm. I guess you wanted to ask me about Haley's whereabouts, right? 
I'm getting old, but I'm not senile. You know, when the Ravens found us and said they might be able to treat Haley, that gave me one last ray of hope. But she's suffered too much already. She doesn't want to keep going, and I can't ask her to. I'm really sorry, sir. I believe that the Ravens have really tried their best. I don't intend to blame the Ravens. After all, it's not like you made her get sick. Right now, all I want to do is fulfill my promise. Haley is waiting for me by the sea. Waiting for her first and last vacation with me. Y you can come with me if you want to. An old geezer like me doesn't stand much of a chance against the zombies alone. You can take the wheel, if that's okay. Haley will be worried. Let's speed things up. You must love her very much. I sure do. She's the kindest woman I ever met. I was a truck driver, so I wasn't at home much. Haley raised our two daughters almost completely on her own. I regret not spending more time with you, though. I should have been a better man. Oh, I, I just remembered. I've prepared some gifts. Gotta be safe on your first adventure, right? I remember that camp up ahead used to have a gift store. Maybe you can find something there. Haley's husband, Arthur, has promised to take me to search for Haley. But we need to go to the seaside. Relax. Mr. Arthur seems very sincere to me. I don't think he's a bad guy. There, sir? Haley. <sighs> We're here, kid. There's one last thing you can do. Go and pick me a bunch of flowers from over there. And you can take Haley. These blue flowers are a bit uninspiring. I should go find some different ones. These red flowers look really nice. I'm sure Arthur and his wife will love them. These... Heavens! It's an explosion! What has Arthur done? He must have left something. I'll need to look around. Senden ve çocuklardan bir süredir haber alamadım. 
ama kendine ve ailene fazlasıyla bakabileceğine inanıyorum. Kocan olan o adama hakkında ilk kez nasıl tanıştığımızı hatırlıyor musun? Açıkçası hala onu pek sevmem. He certainly was. It's a real shame. Ready. Are you from the Ravens? You gotta help me find Allie. That filthy vagrant took her. He'd been following her all over, telling people she was his daughter and that he was gonna get her back. Must have been him who took her. I should have killed the lunatic as soon as he started acting strange. Calm down, sir. I need to know where Allie was seen last. She's gone to a place near the camp where she liked to play kick the can. Damn it, I shouldn't have left her alone. <laughs> My poor Allie. I can't believe it. What terrible things will happen to her? Don't worry. I'll find Allie and the man who took her. Seems pretty dangerous around here. There are signs of zombies as well. Hardly the kind of place to let a kid play alone. That must be the place Mr. Williams mentioned. Uh-oh, a zombie. Better deal with that first. The sound of a can being kicked around will definitely attract zombies. Ah, never mind that though. I should look around for clues. Hadi canım ya tehlikeye bakarak burada tehlike tekmelediğini anlat. There are two sets of footprints. So, seems Ron took her from here after all. Judging by the footprints, they were in a hurry. I'd better be careful. There could be more zombies around. There, more zombies. This road is really dangerous. Something's off. If Ron had kidnapped a kid, he would have been moving more slowly, more carefully. It's starting to look like they were actually running for their lives. The trail goes into that abandoned supermarket. I'd better take a look. There's a girl in there. Hey, kid. Are you Allie? Yes. Can you help Uncle Ron? Uncle Ron? Can you tell me what happened? Where is he? I was playing kick the can. Suddenly, there were all these zombies. Ron helped me get away and hid me in here. And then he left and threw rocks at the zombies. The zombies chased him. 
It was Ron who saved you? Yes. He must be in danger. I beg you, please- I'm going to save him. Allie, you're a good kid. Hide away and someone will come for you shortly. So it turns out Ron was actually saving Allie. But why would he risk his life to save a girl he doesn't even know? I'm going to need to move fast if I'm going to save him. Never mind me. Quick, save my daughter. She's all alone. In that abandoned supermarket. You mean Allie? Don't worry. She's safe and sound back home. Really? Is she... hurt? She's totally fine. Just worried about you. My little angel is always so gentle. I've been searching for her all these years. It's just too bad that I can't make up for the time I lost with her. I just really wish I could play with her one more time. Hey, buck up a bit. Allie's waiting for you to get back, you know? Thank heavens I found my daughter. This time, I meant... Sir, does Allie know that Ron is already... gone? Sure, he was scared sometimes, and lost his way, but in the end, he was a brave man. Such an adorable puppy, Commander. Understood. I'll head over to Ashley's and see what's happening. Doors open. Anyone home? Doesn't seem like it. I'll go in and there's a diary here. That sounds like Gary. I'd better go down and check. Uh, uh. 
Hey, Gary. Where's Ashley? You want to go and find Ashley? Is that it? Let's open the cage and see. Okay, Gary. Where are we going? Hmm. I should follow him. Gary? Are you all right? Oh, you're trying to tell me where Ashley is? Okay, I've got it. You be a good boy and wait here. I'll go get her. there. You're hurt, buddy. What are you doing here all alone? I'd like to find meat to cook a bowl of soup for Gary. I've no idea where those big guys came from. Terrifying stuff. But I'm not so easily bullied. My young, naive friend. This is a wolf. It's a good thing I came when I did. A little later and your head would be in its mouth. Here, let me bandage that wound for you. And then I'll go about fixing you some food. How's that sound? Oh, thank you. You're a wonderful person. I think all this meat should be enough to last Gary a few days. Hey, kid. We should get back. Return and give Gary some soup! Go! Gary is my best friend. Gary was always there for me. He's the only reason that I wasn't afraid. Gary's favorite thing is rolling around in a sunflower field. When it's ready, we have to go play. Gary! Gary, what's wrong? Why did you come out here instead of staying at home to rest like I told you to? It's worried for you, youngin. You two can be a real handful. I'd like to teach you both a good lesson. But first, we've got to get the heck out of Dodge. It's getting dark, and it's dangerous in the wild at night. But it looks like Gary can't move. Sure. I'll take it home for you. Where's Gary gone? Where could he be? You don't want Ashley to see you die. <sighs> Gary, are you all... Ashley, what are you doing out here? Gary, have a bowl of soup. 
It'll make you feel a lot better. You gotta be strong. You hear me? You and Gary love each other, so he will not leave you. It's just way too tired, and needs to return to its home planet to get some rest. <laughs> but... but... I don't want him to go! But, darling, you don't want Gary to keep suffering, do you? And he'll still keep watching over you. I promise. Why not go and say goodbye? Gary! Gary? I miss you! <laughs> Gary, are you really returning to your planet? Will you return to visit? Relax. We're good friends. It won't have forgotten you. But I... I really miss it. mission? <laughs> yes, I will. For Gary. I'll take good care of you. That's a great idea, sir. Good work. Sir, I think you might actually have a heart. Seriously, sir. Looking after the kids is what keeps us all going. Thanks. What's today's training mission, sir? You look a bit... sad. That's terrible. Anything we can do for him? Hello? Doctor. Welcome, welcome. I'm Gary's primary attending physician, Kesha. Are you the volunteers the Ravens said are coming to help? Yes, I'm here with Trey Jones. What do you need help with? Hello and welcome. It looks like Gary has somehow become trapped in a memory from his past. I can do something called synchronous hypnosis which should allow you to enter his consciousness and find where Gary has become lost. After that, you should be able to bring him back out. If you can't find Gary, 
then at least try to find whatever perception or memory is holding him back. Great. I'll do my best to find some clues and relieve him of this burden. Hello? What are you doing? Why are you crying? Can't... <laughs> uh, relax. I'll go find your soccer ball. Let's head inside there and see if we can uncover something. This must be the Doc and his younger brother, and their father as well. Gary, you have a baby brother now. Yes. Yes. You don't sound too pleased. Would you still love me like you did before, Father? I've said this many times. Yes. Yes. Won't you still love me like you did before? You really should take a moment to reflect on your actions. Now is not the time for resentment. I should do my best to look after him. But Dad never had a lot of love for me. What am I supposed to do? Hold on. What's this soccer ball doing here? That's weird. Where did it come from? <sighs> Finally. Oh, let me have a look. Huh, <sighs> this is the second major clue. Gary? Gary!
How many times do I need to tell you? Stop bugging me, you maggot! Don't you dare lay a finger on my stuff! Gary, could I play with your ball? Go away! You're so annoying! Gary? <laughs> No, I can't do this! He's my brother! Maybe I should apologize to Vincent tomorrow. I will not become like my father! No, I can't do this! Gary, are you listening? Let me have a look. Ah, <gasps> this is the third major clue. Gary, this is your ball, isn't it? What do you have to say about this? No, father. No. Is that so? It's... Vincent! It must be him! He's always making off with my ball! Is that so? <laughs> Fetch me my whip. I'm afraid of becoming someone that my father detests, but I can't let you suffer because of that. It's not your fault. Vincent, I'm sorry. I really must apologize to you. From tomorrow on, I'm going to be the best big brother <laughs> I'm afraid of becoming someone that my father detests. The writing is all crooked here. I'm not sure who wrote this. April 12th? My brother always looks so unhappy. Is it because of me? He said I wasn't needed. Maybe I shouldn't have come to this house. I've decided to leave this place. Maybe Gary will be happy then. He's my big brother, and I love him. Why? Vincent, I just decided to be a good brother to you and you left me. Don't I get a chance to make it up to you? I've never said that before. I... I'm such a bad person. I've placed that blasted ball in a place only you would know. I'll wait with it until you get back. Looks like Gary was a terrible older brother. What a tragedy. Gary's younger brother loved him so much. Maybe that's why he wants to find him so bad. This is the present the doctor prepared for his younger brother. The passcode is the date that his brother left home. Uh, let me try to remember. April 12th. Is the password 412? I'm going to try 412.
now is Gary in the wrong? It's that manipulative Vincent. That damn ball. Give it back. Are you Gary? Gary's not the one who's wrong. It was... O'Neal! Give me the damn soccer ball now! Give it back to me! I'll bring the soccer ball to Gary. world that's wrong this damn newspaper it's not true i don't believe it Oh, so Vincent is already gone? I'll give the ball to Gary first. That it? Yes. The soccer ball I meant to leave for Vincent. After all these years. He's... So you never said how you truly feel, right? Why don't you say it? I kept trying to tell Vincent what I really thought. I don't know why, but I kept saying things that even seemed annoying to me. Every time I see the look of shock and disappointment on my brother's face, all I can do is pretend not to care, then run into my room and feel endless regret. The word sorry burned in my throat like lava, but as soon as I said the word, it was all in the past. Just another sad story. How many times have I looked in the mirror to see someone more and more like my father staring back at me? I just want to grab a knife and break it to pieces. I swore I would never become a man like O'Neill. And yet... Somehow I did. Is it your pride as an elder brother that prevents you from dispensing with your posturing? Yes. It was always my damned pride that kept me from saying those words. And just as I'd overcome it, my last chance to say them had gone. Maybe O'Neill is like that too. Being a father. A man's stupid ego is dangerous, but fragile as well. You finally said it. Vincent never really annoyed you, did he? In fact... I think you like him, and you've always wanted to play soccer with him, right? <laughs> That's wonderful. Just wonderful. Now, I can finally break free of this pathetic pride. 
and go play the soccer game from my youth. <laughs> I'm back. All good. How horrible it must be to be constantly living in guilt like that. Anyone you meet might have some sort of unforgivable sin from their past, but the past can never be changed. We must learn how to forgive ourselves in order to become better. That's not good. Do we have any clues that might help us find her? Just let me grab some supplies, and then we can move out right away. You'll hear from us as soon as we learn something. I'm ready. You don't look like you're from around these parts. I'm not. I'm looking for a friend who's gone missing. I think she might be on the island. What'd she look like? I might have seen her. That'd be great if you could help. She's in her 20s, with short blonde hair. She's one of our medics. <sighs> I can't help, I'm afraid. I haven't seen any young blonde doctors lately. Uh, that's a shame. If I were you, I'd get out of here as soon as possible. There are zombies on the island. There's no point getting killed trying to save someone else. Well... So I'd get going, if you want to stay safe. Who am I? Why, I am the one and only poet on this island, Vincent. The poet? What is this chaotic, zombie-infested world of ours, if not a deconstructed postmodernist poem? Hmm? 
and who better to immortalize it in verse than a postmodernist poet such as myself? Sounds like nonsense to me. Each zombie is a line in that poem, a part of a satire on greatness and dignity, and you should leave. Decent people such as you cannot coexist with the deconstructed. Quick, be gone. Huh, and why do I stay? Because I cannot coexist with the decent people. What do you mean, decent people? Want to know what decent makes? Not too pure, that's what it takes. If you're too pure, decent you ain't, and decent folk ain't got that taint. What? You're talking complete nonsense. Uh, clear out. Leave, or I'll tear you limb from limb. Okay, okay. I'm going. Just stay calm. What a mess. Well, I can't find any other clues, so I guess I'll follow him. Can you really not comprehend the logic of our world? If you show kindness to others, they betray you. Kindness does you no good, nor does it help those you give it to. There is no place for it. The zombies are dangerous, but they have no malice. They are like a runway truck, careering forward, but people scheme to hurt each other, and all we can do is to hurt them back if we are to survive. Thanks for your advice. I'll consider it well. The zombies are dangerous, I can tell, but the world of people, that noisy nation, I've left it behind for this isolation. So you took us here to avoid those who would do you wrong? <laughs> oh, if people hurt you, you should hurt them back. Running and hiding like this will never make you strong. The world may burn, the sun may fall, my moral fiber will still stand tall. But don't you think we should reunite and walk as one from dark to light? Melodramatic delivery, incoherent themes, a rhyming scheme more criminal than I am. Don't you remember all those people you were kind to? Who repaid you with violence? Without me, you and this body of ours could never have survived. I'll bet. I'll bet. It's true, though. This is a hard world for kindness to survive in. But that doesn't mean we have no choice but to abandon it. Kindness and survival don't usually go hand in hand these days. Nurture maketh the man. Bad news, Trey. So, I met this character on the island and decided to follow him. We got to this villa, and I realized that he's been talking to himself the whole time. It's like he has two people inside his head. His expression keeps changing. One minute he looks friendly, the next he's vicious. The weird thing is, the friendly version talks in rhyme. He... Uh, they... One of the guys has pretty darned... 
brutal way of dealing with others. Got it. I'll take a picture of the villa and then send it to you. Holy, whatever you do, don't... Who are you? And who is that other guy? The one without the ski mask? Seems to me you're in a bind with a missing pal you've got to find. Is that a rhyme? And who was that other guy? I am Vincent. That was my bro. I hope that's all you need to know. Look, all the rhyming is very amusing. But please, can you take me to see Esther? Why do you speak like my bro? I'm not mute, so you should know all of my words will flow and flow. If it's him you'd like to meet, follow me on your two feet. Since you should ask, I shouldn't lie. I am he, and he is I. As a kid, I was driven away. I roamed the streets just like a stray. And thankfully, I found my bro who cared for me and helped me grow. My life was good, and now I'm strong. It's a shame my bro has gone so wrong. Esther came to the island in search of kin, but suffered for my brother's sin. Perhaps he envied what she once had, but that's no cause to be so bad. Want me to give the rhymes the boot? Sorry, pal. I'm not on mute. Had I known they didn't care, I'd just have given them the stare. Anyway, my bro's been mad a while, so we're hiding out on this here aisle. I can no longer deal with this ridiculous jester. Please, I beg you, come help me save Esther. Damn. It's crawling with zombies outside. Okay, I'm scared. Just stay away. My right to live can't end today. What's wrong with you? I have such a headache. Don't come hurt me. <sighs> so, you've had your look-see. Found... I've had enough of your verse, weakling. Time for you to sleep and me to take control. A coward I could live with. But the constant doggerel verse, if it had been even slightly postmodern, I could have tolerated it, but no. Oh, I 
I didn't mean you. Although you do seem a bit reckless. The world's more dangerous than you realize. And you really shouldn't follow strangers into enclosed spaces. You take care of those zombies. I'm going to see where that ungrateful doctor has run off to. Vincent? What's the matter? <clears throat> My head is spinning. Don't you screw this up for me, asshole. How can a man become such a beast? By what right should I become deceased? No! How is it even possible that someone still has their whole family? Does such a luxury even exist in this world? This isn't fair at all. Your overwhelming sadness ain't got to catch another man hapless. found Esther. She's alive, and it looks like the good Vincent is in control again. But how can we keep it that way? So, all we can do is get Esther out safely? I'll see what I can come up with. Oh, this guy talks in rhyme. But the bad one, he can't stand it. Vincent had two personalities. One good and one evil. I knew it! We're lucky the good one was there, otherwise. But all is well, so please don't worry. He won't be back in a hurry. Whatever. You need to defeat him, no matter how hard it is. Remember, you're the real Vincent. Sounds like you don't blame him for what happened. I've been watching them for three days, and that's what I've been needing to tell him. He has to win. The kind Vincent is the real one. Then, how did these multiple personalities come about? All I can say for now is that he must have suffered some kind of mental trauma. There's tragedy at the heart of every comedy. And the two of them are so different. The brighter the light, the darker the shadows, I guess. Each one reacted against the other and became more extreme. That's as much as I can tell you for now. The details will have to wait for when we get back and a proper diagnosis is made. Until then, we'll just have to do as much as we can to help the poor guy. Uh-oh. Looks like he's getting out of control again. Oh, damn you! All that rapid fire rhyming is making my head hurt. <sighs> Don't try and fight me, weakling. The doctor knows our secret, and if you let her go, I'll find the deepest hole on this island and bury you in it. All that chaos? That's your fault. Be strong and kind, and the chaos may halt. Shut up, shut up! Oh, this body isn't big enough for the both of us, and a weakling like you could never survive alone in the chaos of this world. 
How did you become so naive? I'll tell you how. Because I was fierce and vicious enough to protect you. How long would you have lasted without me? I kept this body alive. Without it, neither of us would be here. And who do you think can keep doing that in this nightmare world? You or me? Uh-oh. Looks like Vincent is losing. Avoid any more drama. Let go of the trauma. No! What hellish verse is this? Even the lowest of reality TV show contestants would be ashamed to sing such a line. You're trying to change the point, and I confess, I didn't know your head was such a mess. Our father is the cause of our hearts so torn, and Esther happened upon this painful thorn. What is this torture? Be brave and be true. Do the best you can do. No! It's awful! It scans wrong. The vocabulary is impoverished. An offense to my ears, it is. You've learned from all my rhymes. Oh, happiest of times! Back! Get back! A man so foolish with such little knowledge of poetics has no right to live! It's your time, bro. Do you agree? Vincent, Vincent, listen to me! I know you're jealous of Esther's domestic joy, but that doesn't excuse your evils, boy! No! Don't give up the fight. It's your body, yours by right. Those rhymes. So coarse. So primitive. You know I'm in. It's time to win. The love of my parents and brother is my deepest source of shame. I dragged him into my mess, and I have only myself to blame. I can't believe it. It's getting even worse. My ears! I can't take it! You cowardly fools! I spit in your faces! I'll dispatch your souls to hellish places! Accept the truth that I am master! And if you give up now, I'll kill you faster! Something's wrong. Huh, dearest brother, though you don't know it, you've just become another poet. family I did not get, so everyone shall have to rue my needs unmet. Oh, no, no, that's wrong, I... that's just wrong! You depraved animals! Set your soul to the extreme depths I must! Oh, show the world who owns this body! You're rhyming, my dear brother! <laughs> That's true, but I'd still like to know how Vincent is. I don't know what Esther thinks or what's going to happen to Vincent in the future. I'm not sure how he will take to remembering the past right now.
Honestly, Dr. Smith, it was hilarious. You won't believe what happened. Oh, you think what happened to Vincent is amusing? Yes. Thank goodness you're all right. That Vincent really is quite a piece of work. You know, it used to be very rare to see someone like that. And neither of them, the good or the bad, sounds exactly normal. That's true. But the good Vincent seems harmless. And he is funny. I've never heard of that kind of compulsive rhyming before. He must have experienced some huge trauma, which caused his personality to split into two completely different people as a coping mechanism. I think the rhyming was another coping mechanism, a kind of humor to try and ease a terrifying situation. Maybe in the same way people like to sing when they're doing tough physical jobs. But it's also true that the evil Vincent might never have appeared if the original hadn't been such a kind person. Brighter lights cast darker shadows. And that trauma... what do you think it was? We might never know, but it must have been awful. Probably some long-lasting childhood trauma. Families can be tough. Wow. His evil alter ego developed as a vengeful response to the sort of trauma he suffered. After all, there's that saying, an eye for an eye, no? It all makes sense, really. Yeah, he was dangerous. But he made a kind of sense. But the good Vincent. The original one. Anyway, you saved me, as well as Vincent. He may seem like a bit of a jokester to you, but he's actually a very troubled soul. All that rhyming was coming from a very dark place. Remember, good people hurt themselves, rather than hurt others. He needs to move on from that. You're not just talking about Vincent, are you? Well, if you feel things are getting to you, you're welcome to come and talk. You've got a confidant here when you need one. Is something wrong, sir? What is it? Ashley? Sure, cute little kid, but tough as old boots. I doubt I'll ever forget her. Why do you ask? Understood, sir. So, what's up with Ashley? What are you trying to say, sir? You're not serious. Our target?
I see. That would give him power over the shelters and outposts. Who am I going with? Wait a minute. Isn't Laura Dunphy O'Neill's most ruthless killer? For anything, sir. Hi, Laura. I'm... Skip the introductions. I don't care. The mission's simple. Kill O'Neill and get his horde of medical supplies back to the shelter. Laura, legend told me you're Ashley's mother. T Trey and his big mouth. Yes, Ashley's my daughter. But that doesn't change. Let's get on with the mission. And if you get in the way, I'll put you down myself. Raiders, take him out! Yes, it's Laura! Mr. O'Neill, what's that traitor? They'll stop us? Look lively, rookie. Don't worry, Laura. I won't slow you down. Not bad, rookie. I'm almost impressed. Laura, the Eagle soldiers knew who you were. Yeah, they'd love to see me dead. You see, I used to be one of them. That shocks you, huh? Believe it or not, I probably felt more at home here than anywhere else, even if it was a hellhole. But why did you betray O'Neill? Look, that's enough of my life story for now. There are more eagles inbound. I guess they don't know what's good for them. Laura! Mr. O'Neill says he's willing to let bygones be bygones. Kill them! I suppose Trey told you about Ashley's diabetes when she sent you to help me? He did. I was sorry to hear about it, Laura. Thank you. She's the most precious thing I ever had. When the doctor told me about her diabetes, I was heartbroken. I'd do anything for her, and there is no way I could let a sick girl grow up in a place like this. Is that why you betrayed the Eagles? For Ashley? I just did what any mother would. If you get any further, O'Neill will know about it. So either you kill them, or O'Neill kill- Everyone back at the shelter loves Ashley. And I know she's a great little kid. If I can do anything to help with her diabetes, I will. come to visit my darling Laura blasted if I don't fix this car mr. O'Neill will I was hoping you'd come to reminisce about old times 
Unfortunately, it seems you're still struggling to face reality. Reality? The reality is that you've stolen all the medical supplies. Supplies my daughter needs. When did you get so self-righteous, Laura? You think leaving the Eagles and playing the good mother for a few years absolves you of your sins? You're scum, O'Neill. Give it up, Laura. Accept your fate. Come back to us and we'll forget you ever left. There's a future for you here. With the Eagles. O'Neill, you can't imagine the lengths a woman will go to for her child. I don't need anything for myself, but I am sure as hell going to give my daughter the world she deserves. I don't know what that Trey Jones said to get into your head, but we are the same, you and I. Neither you nor I can break free of our past. Good person, bad person. No. No. Daddy dearest, it's all over now. No. Laura. Just give it up. It's not, not over. Look at where you are, Laura. It's a dead end. Even if you manage to steal the insulin from me, what happens when that runs out? You might keep Ashley alive a little while longer, but she'll die sooner or later. And when she does, I'll be there to watch. <laughs> What's wrong? Don't mind me. I'm just a bit sentimental about avenging an enemy with my own hands. In any case, thank you for doing so much for me. I did it all for Ashley. And I'm sure anyone else at the shelter would have done the same. If I'd had someone like you from the get-go... What about Laura? Oh, just some baggage I'm dragging around. Guess it shows, huh? We should head back. Ashley's waiting for us. You can leave the rest to Trey. It was the least I could do, sir. For Ashley, and for the shelter. Oh, and what about Laura?
Miss Laura, I heard you chose to stay at the shelter. Trey told you? As well informed as ever, I see. I stayed for Ashley. I had to overcome so many obstacles to get my baby back. I'll never leave my daughter again. I think me staying at the Raven Shelter is better for her. This is the first time in a long while I've been able to trust people. My job is to stay out here and make sure there's a future for her to live in. We'll meet again, though. Ashley's still here, and she means everything to me. Bir sonraki videoda görüşmek üzere. Kendinize iyi bir kısacıklık kalın. Hoşçakalın. Bay bay.